Hi everyone, it's Paul Tilly and welcome to MR2200 Retailing. Today we're looking at Unit 1, Introduction to Retailing. In this unit, we will be looking at defining retailing and the basic retail concept, distinguishing between classifications of retailers, listing examples of issues, changes, and trends in retailing, discussing various elements of the retail environment, and describing the concept of retail strategy. In this part, we're looking specifically at the classifications of retailers in Canada. So let's take a look. If we classify retailers, we can really break it into three broad categories of classifications. We think of retail formats in the form of their ownership, for example. Is this an independent retailer, meaning a one-of, mom-and-pop type shop? Is it a chain where we have a series of these stores across the country or across the province? Or is it a franchise where we have a series of these stores across the country or across the province? The problem is the difference between that and the chain is that a, the chain may have a single owner, whereas a franchise, so each of the independent franchise stores could be owned independently. And they pay a franchise fee to the company whose name they're buying. That happens with Tim Hortons, for example. Or could it be a cooperative where we have uh, a group of people coming together to form a store, such as what happened in the Clanville Co-op, where people who live in the community see a need, they come together, and they all buy shares in this, or to put money into it, to create a store that provides services, goods and services, to them to meet their needs. We could also classify stores by their store strategy, uh, ranging from a convenience store at one end of the extreme. A convenience store would provide the the place function, the time function, the form function, all very close to the customer. So it's right next to them, or relatively close to them. It's available at a time that they want, 24 hours a day, for example, seven days a week, and providing convenience-type products that people will buy on a fairly regular basis. We also have convenience supermarkets, which is exactly the same as convenience store, just offering a broader assortment of items. A superstore or a combination store uh, our large store formats, such as what Dominion have now in many parts of Atlantic Canada, where you have the Superstore, which not only has groceries, but dry goods as well. A specialty store, which specializes in one thing. So it could be like a knickknack store that sells knickknacks. could be a store that sells electronics. could be a store that sells wood. These sorts of things. These would be specialty stores. Traditional department stores, when we think of department stores, department stores would have various departments in them that people could shop through. So it's like stores within stores. Walmart's probably a good example of that. Uh, 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 retail catalog showrooms would be an example of you look at the product in a catalog or online and you walk into the store to actually get it. So these are examples of store strategy. We also have non-store retailing, which is a growing thing. You know, we think about various different types of non-store retailing in home. Avon is a classic example of that, where it gets sold at home. Uh, telephone retailing, where people call and get the product delivered to them. Catalog retailing, again, very similar to what we've seen, like a catalog showcase, where there is a printed catalog, and people can order from the catalog. Uh, direct response uh, retailing, where they send out products in the mail, uh, set out a catalog or a, some sort of flyer in the mail, people order directly from that. Automatic retailing, which is a classic examples of vending machine, for example, you put money in and the product pops out. Or electronic retailing, which we see a lot more of, and this is really online-based things. We often see stores often defined by their format. A convenience store format, again, open 24 hours a day, readily available to the customer, selling convenient type products. Supermarkets, which sell a lot, very depth product, very broad depth product. When we think of Sobeys or, or Dominion, classic examples of that. Specialty stores, which again sell specialty items, be it one of so you go there to buy electronics or you go there to buy wood or something like that. Discount stores, which tend to, tend to sell products at a lower price than the normal market price. Winners would be an example of that. Off-price retailing, which is where we sell stuff that's probably too much was manufactured or or it, it 
gets reduced. Uh, I would think, for example, that the Prince's Auto would be a good example where you can buy lots and lots of, of small rinky-dinky stuff that is usually lower than what it would be sold for somewhere else because these products are old stock, um, too, too much produced, these sorts of things. Warehouse clubs, Costco is a classic example of that where you pay a fee in order to get in. Factory outlets, which is really owned by the company and they, they, the company is a manufacturing company and they usually have a store that you can buy direct from them. Department stores, as we discussed. Something called hypermarkets, which are very, very, very large retailers. Usually they're found in larger cities. We can also flesh out this non-store retailing format uh, a little bit more. Direct selling is when the buyer and the seller directly communicate with one another and deal with one another for a specific product. This is usually related to higher value products. So for example, uh, if you wanted to buy a piece of machinery, normally machinery is sold at a, a corporate level and you have a much more direct relationship with the seller there. We have door-to-door -door selling, which is reduced in popularity, but effectively it is a, what it says. Is someone goes door-to-door -door and sells product. Party selling, which again is similar to Avon, where you have people, uh, distributors for these people, vending machines. We talked about those electronic. Auctions, and these could be real live auctions or um, real live auctions online, such as eBay. Garage sales, Craigslist, you know, classifieds example there and obviously online retailers but online retail and how much has grown over the last few years well the advance of the internet has paralleled the advance of online retailing COVID when COVID struck us it really put a boost in online retailing because people didn't want to go out to shop they would rather shop online we'll see how this trend continues we we know the trend will probably continue upwards but it will be at the same pace? We're not sure. Issues like privacy and variety and quality have come up over the last little while and people still have to wrestle with that. How do I know what I'm buying? We've got a lot of hybridization going on too now where companies tend to be on multi-levels. So they have a brick and mortar store but they're also on social media. They also have uh, an e-store for online sales and online marketplaces they could be in um, auction sites and the like so stores can find themselves in many locations now we're seeing this ever growing as time goes by not only are online retailers limited to the type of sales processing they use but some of the technology has really taken off in the last few years you think about ebay and amazon ebay has really got into uh, people being able to resell, connecting people who have products with people who are want to buy products. Amazon has taken the retailing world by storm by retailing many, many products and allowing vendors to directly contact customers. Facebook and Twitter, which we normally consider as social media sites, have really become marketing behemoths and they track us and they, they can sell this information on our activities to the stores to the companies, and that's used in order to target us with regards to marketing. TripAdvisor is another one that has really allowed um, people to connect with the products they buy and sell in terms of travel, and be able to connect with hotels, uh, travel, agent, uh, travel agencies, airlines, these sorts of things. TripAdvisor allows us to kind of make decisions with regards to products that we don't, haven't even bought yet and services that are very hard to define. So is a hotel a good hotel? Well, TripAdvisor will certainly point people towards the good ones. Cashback apps exist, you know, where we can reduce our price, reduce our cost of purchasing products through this. And Groupon, which is a form of price reduction incentive in order to get people to sell. So if a store has empty seats, how can they do that? Well, they discount the seats and they put it up on Groupon people buy it at a discount rate. Well that's a quick review of how retailers are classified. Next we're going to take a look at examples and issues in terms of the trends in retailing. If you have any questions please let me know.